Gary Chambers, thank you so much for joining me. You're the first politician I've ever interviewed. And so uh, a little nervous because I'm, I'm normally an investor focusing on the investment markets. But as a person who passionately believes that marijuana should be legalized, regulated, and decriminalized, I find your candidacy and your campaign fascinating. And I think that investors in the cannabis industry would be well served to support your campaign to get the message of cannabis legalization out to a broader audience. So thank you so much for just agreeing to do this interview. Thank you. I'm curious, how did you choose marijuana as your kind of coming out campaign issue? Uh, well, my communications director, Eric Sanchez, uh, wrote a script that uh, he presented to me and our media director, Irwin Marino, and uh, the script was compelling. It talked about what was important as far as the legislation goes uh, and, and where the numbers are for us as a country. Um, and I am someone who uses cannabis and believe that this is something that shouldn't be as controversial as it is. We thought it would cut through the noise. And so it was a really simple decision for me. We decided to do it and we did. And it's been uh, transformative for our campaign. So I'm glad that you said that because I wanted to ask, do you think marijuana or cannabis legalization will resonate as, as an issue and more importantly, actively drive voters to come out to vote? I absolutely think that it's going to drive voters to come out and vote, especially uh, young voters and people who feel disenfranchised, people who've been negatively impacted by uh, cannabis legislation. There are tons of families in the state of Louisiana who uh, have loved ones who have been uh, arrested or incarcerated for simple possession um, and want to see these pieces of legislation change and want an advocate uh, in their U.S. senator as somebody who's gonna go there and fight for this legislation and fight to ensure that people have uh, some, some form of equity in this country as it relates to this issue. So statistics and facts matter. And I like to cite two statistics, or you know, at least one statistic uh, when it comes to opioids and that the number one way to lower opioid overdose, overdoses, which is plaguing our country, um, is to open one cannabis dispensary. And that in the surrounding areas, you have a 20% drop in opioid deaths. Now in your campaign ad, you use another very important statistic. Can you talk to me about 37 seconds and what that means? Uh, every 37 seconds, someone uh, is arrested for cannabis use in this country, um, and that is a travesty. It's something that we have to be uh, very intentional about doing something about, and it's why we did the ad to ensure that people understood that far too often in this country, every minute people are being arrested for something that people are profiting off of. The people who are investing in uh, cannabis investment or making a profit off something that people are still going to jail for in this country. And it's not right. And we need to do everything in our power to make sure that that's not still happening in this country. I completely agree. I've been uh, supporting the Weldon Project um, and, and trying to get prisoners uh, to advocate to get clemency for prisoners. And it is completely insane to me that as an investor, I'm investing in state legal businesses. And my hope is that I am going to, and my, myself and my investors are gonna profit. And people are still being arrested to this day for nonviolent uh, cannabis possession and that people are still in prison. It's, 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 it's beyond wrong. It's, it's one of the absurdities of cannabis, federal illegality at least. And, you know, it's it's a frustrating issue. It's it's I don't know what else someone like like myself, like what else do you think that investors who are passionate about this issue can do? I think put your money where your mouth is uh, as often as possible, um, not just in the things that yield you a return, but the things that give us equity and justice, uh, supporting not just my campaign, but the campaign of candidates who uh, will 
pushed the legalization of cannabis in all 50 states uh, to help fund a national conversation around legalization of cannabis, to push this president to do the things that he said that he would do around cannabis, uh, from decriminalizing to studying uh, its impacts. Um, there's a ton of things that we could do in the immediate, but the people with the resources are often not connected to the people who are doing the work. And so it, it is incumbent of the people with the resources to find out how can they get their resources connected to people who are doing the work. No, I like that. Now, I think most people don't have strong opinions about marijuana, and most people probably agree it should be legal. But I get the sense, and maybe I'm wrong, that because it's not a hot button issue, it doesn't get the kind of support that you necessary to get it to the finish line. Like when I, when I read between the lines of what either politicians in power are talking about, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like they're like, oh, if I delay this or I don't really support it, it's not gonna really affect me. Or it's not gonna affect people voting for me. How would you respond to that? I, I think that this conversation affects us all. Um, and it's a conversation that we need to be having in this country. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I'm not from Louisiana, but when I was doing research, uh, preparing for our interview, I frankly couldn't believe that an Afri that there hasn't been an African-American that has won a statewide uh, office election since Reconstruction. And it, it, despite a third of Louisiana being African-American, and it was just a shocking statistic. And with that, with the incumbent that you're, that you're running against, I'm curious, what is your strategy to kind of overcome the odds of fighting an incumbent in the past history of no one like you winning a state one way wide race? Well, I think the reason nobody like me is want to stay wide, wide race is because they haven't had the resources to win. Uh, there was a sister named Gwen Collins Greenup who ran for secretary of state here in Louisiana. She had $9,000 in her campaign account. She got 41% of the vote. Uh, if she had had uh, $10 million like John Bill Edwards, who was the Democrat, white Democrat in the race, he became the governor of the state of Louisiana in the same year that Gwen Collins Greenup had $9,000 in the bank. John Bell had $10 million in the bank. Um, and so the Black woman who ran for this seat was not uh, able to be victorious because she didn't have the resources to be able to talk to, talk to voters and touch voters. Uh, this is really not just a race game uh, as it relates to how we win. It's a finance game. Uh, yeah. There are people, Black, White, uh, and everything in between who believe in the same things that we believe in. But can you touch those voters? Can you reach those people with your message? Um, and often the financial structure of this state does not want to see uh, people like me elected so they don't put their resources into those campaigns. But the beauty of a U.S. Senate race is a U.S. Senator impacts the entire country. Um, and so it is a reason for the entire country to be invested in what happens in Louisiana. Um, and the message that we've been sending to the Democratic Party and to everybody else is, Houston is a city of four mil three, four million people. Louisiana is a state of 3.9 million people, 4 million people. If you can uh, do the work of flipping Harris County, surely you can flip Texas. If you can flip Harris County in Texas, surely you can flip Louisiana. Um, and so uh, the party, as well as people who are concerned about how do we make change in this country, should look at Louisiana as an opportunity where your money will go further to be able to touch voters and make an impact to win an election. No, that's great. And then so when I follow, I follow you on Twitter and I see you going to New York and I see you uh, going to California and, and, and all these other places, it's to tell that message and to help raise that money from outside resources to help you have the capital to run a well-funded campaign. Absolutely. Got it. Who has been an inspiration to you? And are there other candidates that are running on legalization of marijuana uh, like you are that you'd recommend uh, someone like myself to pay attention to? Uh, I don't really, uh, there are a whole host of folks in state legislatures around the country who are pushing legalization efforts. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, State Rep Edmund Jordan, 
uh, here, state rep, former state rep Ted James has also brought legalization efforts here in Louisiana. Uh, I don't necessarily have a bunch of political role models. My role model is my father, um, a man who uh, worked hard to provide for me and give me a life that I didn't deserve uh, to have an opportunity to be able to run for the U.S. Senate uh, because he gave me most of all the ability to believe in myself. That's great. Um, I can tell you that my father is an inspiration to me as well. I grew up very poor and I've been provided incredible advantages to get where I am. So that, that really resonates a lot with me. Thank you. Uh, obviously people can give to your campaign. Are there other ways that regular people or people who are not politicians uh, can help you? They can sign up on our website to volunteer. We're going to need people all over the country to phone bank folks to get on buses and come knock doors for us and help us mobilize the vote all over the state. Well, that's great. Well, listen, I really appreciate you joining us. I think your message is really important. And for anyone invested in the cannabis space, I think it makes sense to support your campaign, to keep the pressure on politicians so that it's a win for uh, people that are being arrested uh, unfairly. It's a win for investors. It's a win for consumers. It's a win for jobs and taxes. So uh, uh, I'm wishing you good luck and uh, rooting you on. And, and thank you so much for uh, joining me. Thank you. Be well, brother.